Okay, now we we escape from Malthus. Okay, so the next section is beyond Malthus, and we will use this escape from Malthus. We will use that uh, in order to introduce the first uh, class of ordinary differential equation that we will be able to solve, which is the class of uh, ODE with uh, separate variables, okay? So, uh, we go to Verhulst. Verhulst was from Belgium and he was interested in the evolution of population of Belgium. So, the idea is the following. Malthus says he postulates that there is a unique, a sort of absolute growth rate of population which is the following this alpha y prime equal to alpha y okay here alpha is independent of the population. So the idea of Malthus is the following. You have this exponential growth. I repeat, exponential is synonymous of very fast growth. And... At some point, there is no food. So this is the limit of food. And they all die. Very pessimistic point of view. Fairhulst says on the other hand, that as the population grows, so, during the process of the growth of population, the food lowers, the, food, the amount of food available to population becomes lower and lower. And uh, so what happens is that uh, the rate, sorry, the, the growth rate declines as uh, the population increases. So, this is the idea, the qualitative idea. Now we have to introduce the idea in our model. So, to translate mathematically this idea into mathematical language, Fairhulst uh, introduced uh, <clears throat> n, uh, a quantity, a quantity n 
n max, which is the maximal amount of population, which is affordable by the system, which can be a state uh, or again a laboratory and so on. So on. And uh, so the growth rate is corrected in the following way. Instead of alpha, mm -hmm. we correct it to alpha times n max minus n divided by n max. So when n is small, so the population is small, the growth is the same as in the Malthus model. Oh, sorry. As uh, the population grows, as N, capital N, grows, the growth rate decays linearly, which means that this, as a function of capital N, this is a line. This is the, the meaning, the naive meaning of linearly in this context. So, the equation of the Ferlus model is then the following. <clears throat> N prime is equal to alpha N max minus N divided by N max times N. Okay? Notice that this equation is much more complicated than before is much complicated, much more complicated than before because uh, uh, so here on the right hand side n presents a power 2 with the language I will introduce in this video or in the next video this equation is no longer linear okay just keep in mind this word now and uh, uh, so this is a again a first order differential equation. Because the derivative is the first, and this is a relationship between a function unknown n and its first derivative. And prime. So this is a first order differential equation, and uh, so we expect it to have infinitely many solutions, and we see immediately that two solutions are there. So two solutions are trivially found. First, if we have no population, if, if at some point, at some time, capital N is equal to zero, remember that we do not allow immigration or emigration 
So there cannot be mating, there cannot be death. So the population remains the same, indeed. And prime is equal to zero, so the population cannot vary. We have n prime. So sorry, n of t equal to zero for every t is a solution. Let us call it this equation v as Fairhurst is a solution to Fairhurst equation. And uh, indeed, sorry, indeed, with two e, indeed, we have that n prime of t is equal to zero, which is equal to alpha n max minus n of t, which is equal to zero divided by n max times n t. This is the second, the first solution. So the second solution. If instead of uh, starting with no population, we start with the maximum of population. If we start with the maximum of population, here we have uh, that m prime is equal to 0 to, so we have no variation. So the second says, if, if at some time n of t is equal to n max, again, then we have n prime of t is equal to zero, and again, the population cannot vary. So, n of t identically equal to n max at any time t is again a solution to Fairhurst equation. Hmm? So let us verify indeed we have n prime of t is equal to zero for every t and this is equal to alpha n max minus n of t divided by n max times n of t. And here, this time, this factor here is equal to zero, so everything is equal to zero, while in the previous solution, the previous example, this was equal to zero. Okay? So, we found two special solutions, and a uh, uh, peculiar uh, feature of these uh, two solutions is that they are constant. And uh, notice that the constant solutions uh, coincide, they are determined by the zeros of the right hand side of the equation. alpha n max minus n times n divided by n max equal to zero. Okay? Like now, this is the easy part if you want. And now let us look for the other solutions, which are non-constant and non-trivial at all.
So let us start by this equation. And first, we normalize the equation. What does it mean, normalize? Just we put it in a simpler form. We have n prime is equal to alpha n max minus n times n divided by n max. So this can be written as alpha <clears throat> 1 minus n divided by n max times n. So we have here that n prime divided by n max is equal to alpha 1 minus n divided by n max times n divided by n max, because here we added these two divisors here. And so in, we introduce the variable, the new variable, y uh, is equal to n divided by and max, we get the equation, normalized Fairhulls equation. Y prime is equal to alpha one minus y, y. Okay, and this is the equation we will refer to as the Fairhulls equation or the logistic equation. Okay, and remember this, Remember this variable here if you want to restore the interpretation in terms of population. But now we are interested in the mathematics of, of this. Of this. Um, of this equation. And no longer in the interpretation in terms of dynamics of population. And uh, the constant solutions that we found before now correspond to y is equal to 0 and y equal to 1. And uh, so let us start taking the habit to draw, to represent all solutions here. And so we have y equal to 0, which is a first solution, and here we have y equal to 1. Hmm. And now we want to work on this equation. And now we use a method called separation of variable. The idea is the following. Take the equation, but through multiplication of both sides, so very simply, very uh, uh, elementary method, through the multiplication of both sides of the equation,
put all the Y's at the left hand side of the equation and all the T's which is the independent variable in the right hand side this is not only not always possible. This is possible in this equation and in the class or in this class of equation, but in general it is not possible. So in this case, so dividing by y, one minus y. First we assume y different from zero and one to be verified a posteriori at the end. on the solution that we will find the solutions that we will find and so we have here y prime divided by y 1 minus y is equal to alpha so here we separated the variable here there are at the left hand side there are the all y's and the right hand side we have all t's. Okay. And now we integrate both sides. This is very important in the variable t. both sides in the variable t. This is very important to, to remember in the variable t. A uh, great source of mistake here is that one wants immediately to integrate in y here and in t here. This is not immediate. You always start from the integration in the variable t. So you have y prime dt divided by one, uh, sorry, y, one minus y is equal to the integral of alpha in dt. Okay. Now, notice that here you have this very nice term here, very nice factor, y prime dt, and this is, if you interpret it as a change of variable, this is dy. So this is not an algebraic uh, relationship. We already studied the, the change of variable in integrals. So, so uh, the philosophy, the right philosophy, the mathematically rigorous way to do that is to say that there is a change of variable from t to y. And here you write dy divided by y. 1 minus y is equal to the integral of alpha in dt. Very good. Okay, and now we, we really perform, we really realized the change of variable. And now we integrate. So we compute the integrals in both sides. The first of the two integral, so sorry, the second is very easy. So let us get rid of it immediately. Alpha is a constant in this model. So here we have alpha t plus c. We put here the constant of integration and always remember, so do not forget, about the constant of integration.
The first integral, on the other hand, uh, is easy. It's not completely trivial, it's not immediate, but it is very easy because uh, it is uh, uh, an integral of a rational function. And uh, so you know that you just have to write 1 over y times 1 minus y as a sum of elementary fraction, and this is immediate, it is 1 over y plus 1 over 1 minus y. Then, the integral dy of 1 over y, 1 minus y, this is equal to the integral dy over y, plus dy divided by 1 minus y. And here you use the logarithm, and here you have to remember, you have not to forget the absolute value. This is the logarithm of the absolute value of y minus the logarithm of the absolute value 1 minus y. And here there is a minus sign, because here there is a minus y. Okay? This is very important. And again, plus c. And now you can write here the logarithm of the absolute value of y divided by 1 minus y plus c. Then, going back to the equation, we have that the right-hand side, which is the uh, logarithm of the absolute value y divided by 1 minus y equals alpha t plus c. Oh, here I put only one c. So the c at the right-hand side embodies uh, the two c's Both C's arising from the double integration, from the two integrations. Hmm? So at the end, uh, you just exponentiate both members, and then you have Y divided by 1 minus Y, absolute value, this is equal to e to the power alpha t plus c. Okay? And this is the solution in an implicit form. And now the next step is uh, explicit y of t. So we have to solve this equation. But remember here that there is an absolute value, so we have to deal with this absolute value. So now we have to distinguish two cases. And the first case is uh, when uh, here inside everything is positive, so y larger than zero, oh sorry, and y less than one. And this is the interesting case in front of the model, which means uh, that the population is positive, so we are not in the trivial case, nobody is there, and it is less than the maximal charge of population, which is exactly where Fernhulst model should work, if it is a good model. So then, so the quantity inside the absolute value is positive,
and we have that y divided by 1 minus y is equal to e to the alpha t plus c that can be written as capital C e to the alpha t where capital C is equal to e to the alpha c which is a positive number so y is capital C e to the alpha t 1 minus y so that y of t is equal to c e to the alpha t and here 1 plus c e to the alpha t okay so and this is a general solution for this uh, for this uh, step for this uh, part and uh, so we have and so first we compute the limit for t go to minus infinity y of t is equal to zero then the limit for t going to plus infinity of y of t is equal to what when t goes to plus infinity alpha is positive so this exponential dominates the other term so this is equal to 1 and this is y prime of t is equal to alpha y of t 1 minus y of t and now notice that uh, this is larger than 0 since uh, y of t it's at any time between oh sorry between 0 and 1 this is clear this quantity is positive and it is less than 1 because the denominator is always strictly larger than the numerator so every solution is strictly increasing. Okay, so we try to 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 to, to represent one one solution. It is very very easy. Here we have that the solutions are strictly increasing. We go to the schema here solutions are strictly increasing and uh, they go to zero as t goes to minus infinity and then increase and they go to one as t goes to plus infinity it is a very easy shape that we found this is one solution for instance and let us look at, at the others <clears throat> so a remark an important remark We have that y of t can be written as uh, e to the alpha t plus c divided by 1 plus t, uh, sorry, plus c, I don't want to, to write capital C in this way, so 1 plus e to the alpha t plus c is equal to e. To the alpha, let us put it here, t plus, uh, let me say, c prime, and here, 1 plus e to the alpha, and then brackets, t plus c prime. Why did I write in this way? Because here, it is clear that uh, every solution, every couple of solutions, 
in the range 0 less than y less than y are the translated of each other. Okay. And so this, this makes it very easy to picture all of them So let us see here what happens. If we want to picture the other solution, take the one we already pictured and just translate it. I don't want to do it with iPad because otherwise. And then another interesting feature. And since they are the translated of each other, so as a consequence, Since they are monotone, they never cross each other. And this is very important. We will develop this fact. They never cross each other. Very nice. Okay. And uh, another remark is the following. is that we started by supposing that y was to be between 0 and 1, and then we computed the solutions. Then, after computation, eventually, Remember that eventually in English means at the end, okay? Eventually, we found solutions in the same range between 0 and 1. And this is good for the method. So this confirmed. our method. Good. This is very good. And now we go to the to the second case. The second case is the following. We consider the case uh, y less than 0 or y larger than 1. From the dynamics population, this is not really meaningful, which this means negative population. This is a population which is beyond the maximum that we established. However, mathematically, it is interesting. This means so that. the fraction inside the absolute value is negative. Hmm? So what we have is y divided by y minus 1 is equal to c e to the alpha t, again with c larger than 0. So y is equal to c e to the alpha t y minus 1, and as a final form of the solution, we write y of t is equal to c e to the alpha t divided by c e to the alpha t minus 1. Good. So y of t goes to 0, 
as t goes to minus infinity and y of t goes to 1 like before as t goes to plus infinity and y of t y prime of t is equal to alpha y 1 minus y less than 0 so these solutions are strictly decreasing And uh, it seems to be very similar, but there is a very important qualitative difference. So, very important. We have to notice that there is a, a vertical asymptote for all solutions. So, y of t goes to plus minus infinity as t goes to 1 over alpha log 1 over c plus minus okay so all solutions here can be represented in this way there is this asymptote and so these solutions are like that they go to 0 here they are decreasing and then start here again and then all that translated are there and so on and so on I use colors for a solution with the same algebraic <clears throat> and you see that they have uh, different uh, asymptotes here there is an asymptote here and there is another asymptote uh, sorry brown asymptote here so the best way is first draw the asymptote for instance a gray asymptote here and then you will have a gray solution here and here they are all the translated one of the other so also the asymptote is translated Mm -hmm. so I write here so every expression for a fixed C with a fixed C which is always positive presents a vertical asymptote so that change in C the position of the asymptote changes And the corresponding solution never meet the previous ones, the other ones. The other ones. And there is a, uh, another remark which is not very important. It is very, very important. This very, very important says uh, that... Uh, since this equation comes from a, a real problem to model a real phenomenon, so since the equation and many differential equations comes from real problems,
we want it to be defined on an interval, so without jumps of time. So jumps of time in the domain, so holes in the domain, are to be forbidden. Why? Since uh, unconsciously we believe that the time is a continuum. Since are uh, surreptitious, huh? so hidden, unconscious, model of time is a continuum. We are not obliged to use a continuum. This is the idea that we have. In physics, there are now many models with a discrete, discrete time. But this is not the situation in analysis one. That is one is really elementary. Okay. And uh, therefore, what is the consequence of this? Therefore, when we have uh, this expression, the expression of the new solutions here, when we have this expression here, this expression has contains be careful here two solutions. with the same expression, one defined on the interval on minus infinity, and then this one over a, one over alpha log one over c. The other on one over a log one over c plus infinity. Okay, what happens at 1 over a log 1 over c? It happens that the model, from the point of view of uh, modeling, physical, biological, real problems, the model is no longer good. You should modify the model. Okay, from the point of view of the modelization, When the solution ceases to exist, where well, there is the asymptote, the model is no longer adequate and one should modify it. But here, our, our job here is the job of a mathematician. So for us, just we say that the, the solution stops there. It's not globally defined. It's not defined on R. From the point of view of mathematics, We say that the solution is not globally defined. Okay. Now, comments uh, are the following comments. What we learned from this example
So first, again, Ferlust, it is also called the logistic equation, so, oh, logistic equation, has infinitely many solutions, okay, this is easy and expected. Second, there are no, there are, sorry, two constant solutions that are y equal to 0 and y equal to 1 that separate the plane T, Y, in three regions, Y less than zero, Y between zero and one, and Y larger than one. Three, the three regions never mix each other. Do not communicate, okay? which means that a solution, every solution, always belongs to a region only, for every time of existence. existence. Fourth, two solutions never meet. which means, namely, the problem, which will be called the Cauchy problem, y prime is equal to alpha y1 minus y, and y of time t0 is equal to y0, has one and only one only solution. That means that this condition selects one out of the infinitely many solution of this. Okay? And five, we used a method called separation of variables. Method of separation of variables that we will, we will deepen its knowledge uh, in uh, in the next video. So now we are ready to start with the general theory. These were examples, but if you understand, if you really enter in this example, now everything will be, will be really, really easy. And they are important examples. Okay, see you in the next video.